Hey, what's up, guys? So the Fire Emblem Heroes Christmas units have just been unveiled. So I figured I'd uh, make a quick video where we take a look at the new units that are being introduced into the game. And as we do that, we can take a look at the skills and discuss it a little bit. Um, and yeah, well, with that being said, I guess we just dive right in. Alright, so I'm going to pause on each artwork so we can take a look at their character designs. Um, Lissa looking fabulous. Man. Okay, so she is going to be an axe unit and she is going to be an armor unit. So that's good to know. And, hmm. I thought she'd have like reindeer stuff coming out of her hair, but I guess not. But... This works as well. It looks really... Yeah, it, it, it looks pretty cute. Alright, moving on. Do you adore my outfit? Okay, so here are the skills. So for a weapon, it's going to be hand bell plus. The plus sign uh, kind of signifies that it's going to not... It's not going to be a legendary weapon, unlike the uh, Halloween Naui weapon. It was a Grimmar, so that was legendary weapon. So handbell, you should be able to inherit skill to a different unit if you choose to want to do that. Uh, weapon might have 14, that's pretty good. Grants attack, speed, defense, and resistance plus 2 during combat. If the foe initiates combat, that's pretty good for a defensive enemy phase unit. Um, it essentially brings the uh, weapon might up to 16, which is on par with legendary weapons, which is really good. Um, the plus 2 speed might help you not get doubled, which can be quite helpful. Uh, I guess defense and res, it's 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 good to have them, I, I guess. Um, especially if you plan on giving this to another armored unit, that could be pretty good. Um, the plus two defense could uh, stack, well not stack, but like work in favor with uh, bonfire. So bonfire, we all know what that does. It boosts damage dealt by 50% of units defense. So yeah, you get one more damage out of being attacked. I guess 50% of two is one. Um, so for the slot B, we have uh, Bold Fighter 3. Now, when I first saw the skill, I, I kind of first saw this video on my phone, on a small screen, so I didn't realize that Lissa is actually a armored unit. So I kind of freaked out for a little bit, thinking that this skill might be able, you might be able to give uh, Reinhardt this skill, which would be not, not great. But anyways, um, I should probably talk about the skill itself. If unit initiates combat, unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack Grants special cooldown charge plus one per attack. Does not stack. Fair enough. Well, not really fair, but... So basically, it's like Branch Assault, but with no HP threshold. And also a built-in heavy blade. So it's as if Branch Assault combined itself with Ephraim's weapon refinement slightly better because that one has a HP threshold thing as well um, and it's got a heavy blade built in so this is going to be insane um, I feel like this skill right here is a little bit too strong in my opinion because if you think about it if you give Brave Bow Jacob like if you if you get a Halloween Jacob and you put Brave Bow on the guy and then you give him Bold Fighter 3 and Death Blow 3. He's going to be able to initiate and quad your opponents. And he's going to be able to proc Aether during the process. Because the first hit will be like, well, you go 0 and then you go 2, 4, 
six, so Aether is ready, and the fourth hit will be Aether. That that is insane. So I'm I'm not sure what what they're going for here, but alternatively you could put Gale Force on them. I'm I'm not sure if that. Wait, Gale Force only works on melee units, so no, you can't do that. But Aether, um, wait, does Aether only work on melee units as well? Okay, better fucking only <laughs> work on melee units, because otherwise you could just get one of those, uh, you know, five cooldown charge requirement stuff off with, uh, you know, just just for free. That, that's that's insane. Um, fortify armor, okay, we all know what that does. Uh, nothing too new there. So, with that being said, I guess we move on to the next unit. We'll check out Lissa's cute animation. Lissa made me wear this. Okay, so, uh... Hey, you know, out of curiosity, is Matt Mercer the guy that voices McCree in, uh, Overwatch? I, I, I'm pretty sure it is, but I'm not entirely sure it's the same guy. But anyways, um, let's take a look at Krom here. He's got... a Santa-esque cloak thing. I like the little green part underneath. Doesn't have a beard, but that's okay. He's uh, been working out a little bit more than his normal form, because as you can see here, he's taking some lessons from Ogma, getting those biceps buffed up. I like that. Well, yeah, a little bit. Not, don't, yeah, okay, wait, yeah. Um, I like this part here. I, I don't know what's going on here, but it looks pretty cool. Uh, I guess there's a one-sided cape, maybe. He's still got the Felsi on, but he's not going to use it. So he's a uh, he, he's kind of like taking lessons from Ogma and Raven at the same time. Put your sword in your artwork, but actually use the axe. So we can see right here, he is a axe unit, and he's also going to be a armor unit. Um... Yeah, so if you're trying to pull Lissa, and this guy could uh, block you. And alternatively, if you're trying to pull Krom, then Lissa could come up and break your pity rate. So, I don't know. I guess I guess it might be good if you don't mind either of them, but if you're trying to snipe one of them, that might be a little bit difficult. Alright, let's, let's move on take a look at the skills. Alright, so we got Sacco Gifts plus. So again, it's not gonna be a legendary weapon, and basically it's got the same weapon effect as the previous weapon, which I already talked about. And you can inherit it to you know other axe units if you want to. I guess I guess. I guess um if you have a axe unit, you can choose to give them a bell or a sack of gifts. That that that's the uh, that's the play here. Um, he comes with pivot, which is okay. Don't need to kill off a Cherche for that. Which um, yeah, I, I guess it's good. Brazen attack slash defense three. All right. So if unit's HP is equal to or below. 80% at the start of combat grants attack and defense plus 7 during combat so you don't have to initiate you can get attacked on so it works in both player phase and enemy phase and the requirement is your character having less than 80% HP and it's an A slot skill okay so Hmm. Well, A slots on armored units usually, like, I, I guess the best one would be, like, the stun counter. So, yeah, I was gonna say, um, this skill kind of works pretty well together with may maybe Quick Reposed, because Quick Reposed would drop you. Like it, it works at a threshold of when, when your HP is 
is above 70% or if you've got quick repose too then it works like 80% and above and then once it drops below 80% then brazen attack uh, kicks in to save your ass um, I guess that's more of a like a neutral doesn't benefit the uh, quick repose kind of thing it's just a cover your bases do something with each end of the uh, HP threshold kind of build I'm not too sure um, not not too sure on the skill not too sure on builds that might be uh, pretty good with it but I guess if you put it on yeah, you know, I guess it could be good for tanks so at the start of combat so I guess it could be pretty good yeah alright alright so we got worry fighter 3 uh, we all know what that does prevents your unit from being doubled in combat uh, if your unit is above the 50% HP threshold okay interesting now let's check out the animation full crom I hope this outfit doesn't make me too much of a target on the battlefield. All right, so Krom is a lance unit, and he's going to be a armored unit, also. Um. Okay. Well, I guess Robin and um the remaining unit that's coming up on the list, Sarja, they've been kind of leaked from. You know, since since last year, so we all know they were coming, uh, but yeah, and didn't know he was going to be a lance unit and a armor unit. So I guess that's interesting. Um, as for his outfit, he's got the uh, Santa Claus thing going on there. Um, right beside him, you can see the uh, Christmas tree, which he uses as a lance, and that's his lance. That's pretty funny. If I manage to pull, uh some extra robins which I probably won't be able to but if I do I'd like to give my Azura a Christmas tree because it'll just look kind of funny you know like I've already given her a carrot now she can have a Christmas tree and it'll look cute anyways uh, let's take a look at the skills okay so we got the tan tanaboom I, I guess Okay, so it's basically the same weapon like the previous two with a different name and it's a lance instead of a axe. Reciprocal aid, so yeah, we all know what that does. Alright, the A slot is brazen attack slash speed 3, which is new skill. Like the previous one that um, on Chrome, if unit's HP is equal to or below 80% at the start of combat grants attack and speed plus 7 during combat okay so this this skill is way 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 more interesting to me um, than the previous skill which gave you attack and defense plus 7 now I'm assuming these two skills can be inherited to non-armor units but I'm not entirely sure. But um, if that is the case, uh, I'm kind of working on a character build at the moment. I call it the one shot Ira build. Basically, I took a plus attack Ira, gave her Wu Dao plus, gonna refine it with attack, keep Regnal Astra, gave her Wrath 3, gonna give her the attack plus 3 seal gonna give her reciprocal aid and currently I have Swiss Barrow 2 on the A slot but if this little baby here um, is inheritable to any unit I'm, I'm gonna give it to uh, my plus attack era and then she'll do a insane crazy amount of um, damage when she uh, procs her Regno Astra it'll be a one shot for most units in the game um, I think it does something like 
like raw ad raw damage output I think it's like 99 damage or something I I'm not too sure like without buffs so then you factor in like the defense that your opponent has the and the color stuff and the defensive tiles and all that other stuff but but yeah um I'm excited for the skill for that one reason I I'm building a one shot IRA build and if if this works out if if I can inherit this to my IRA then it's it's going to not be fun for some people but it's going to be fun for fun for me yeah fun for me okay so armor march 3 we we know what that does uh yeah basically armor march okay so let's check out this animation i'm running out of stuff to talk about i wonder if this is normal enough for robin Oh no, we skipped our artwork. Wait, can I go back just a tiny bit? Yes, okay. Okay, uh, a little bit not safe for work right there, I, I guess. Um, I wonder if pausing too long on it will get my video like deleted on YouTube or something. I, I don't know. Hmm. Okay, so uh, I, I, I like it, but... I'm not entirely sure why she is a uh, armored mage, but okay, I I don't care. Um, so she's a red armored mage, the second armored mage to appear in the game. The first one being Halloween Henry. Uh, although a red mage, I'm not too sure. Like green mage is uh, probably a little bit better because of the current Reinhardt thing going on in the uh, arena, and then. Blue mages are pretty good as well, but red mages are, you know, they're still good, but it's just out of the three, it's, it's a little bit, oh well. Um, but yeah, the character design I do like, except I, I feel like her face is a little bit, uh... I don't know. It's a little bit too cute for Sarja, maybe, if that makes sense. It's a little bit, like, rounded and chibi-ish. I don't know. Okay. Alright. I have no idea where she's keeping all that weight, though. Because I feel like armored units are just, like, really heavy units. So where is she keeping all that weight? That's what I want to like, kind of know, because she's not carrying presents or anything like that, but she still weighs like an armored unit, so that's kind of interesting to think about. Um, okay, let's move on and take a look at the skills. Okay, uh, so we have the can, candle bra can. <laughs> Candle, can, can, candelabra. Okay, so I basically just saw candle and then bra at the at the end there. So candelabra. Okay, whatever. Plus. Okay, so it's basically the same weapon, um, like the previous three units, but this one is a red tomb variant instead. Uh, she's got Iceberg as a attack uh, special, which probably means she will have quite a bit of res. That's all good. She comes with close counter. No need to sacrifice a Takumi to give close counter. She's the second character in the whole game to have close counter next to Takumi, which is kind of nice. But please, if you pull her, do not sacrifice her for close counter. Consider merging her because... Um, I, I think a plus two is totally worth it if you roll that much. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, cl close counter not not worth killing a event kind of unit for, I, I reckon. Maybe just wait for the Takumis. I don't know, that's just me personally. Um, Vengeful Fighter 3. Okay, so. If unit's HP is above 50%, 
Oh, interesting. This one's got an HP threshold. Okay. If unit's HP is above or equal to 50% and foe initiates combat, unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack and grants special cooldown charge plus one per attack does not stack. Okay, so it's basically like Bold Fighter where Bold Fighter is a player phase. You have to go and initiate as a armor unit, which is not a very easy thing to do in some situations because of that one movement thing um, but it's, it's you know you can do like armor march and still do it um, vengeful fighter 3 is uh, sticking true to its enemy phase kind of uh, play with the armor emblem play style you kind of want your enemies to attack you and then you counter attack so this kind of promotes that and it also gives you more charge, which is nice, but because it's easier to proc, um, it's got an HP threshold, unlike Bold Fighter. Um, so yeah, I guess Bold Fighter for guys like, um, like armored, armored units with range, I, I guess. And then Vengeful Fighter for guys like, uh, hmm. See if, like if you put on Hector, would that be good? So let's see. Let's say uh, he's got armor, so he's gonna be guaranteed to double an opponent when they first attack him. Um, and it's gonna be cooldown charge plus one per attack, and he's got different counters. So he's going to go Hoo, and get his two charge. Per, per attack. Does this mean even if they attack you, you get it as well? Right, let's assume you don't. So they attack you, you get one charge, and then you go Hoo! and you get two charges, so that's three charge. And then because you're Hector and you're slow, they're gonna attack you again, so Hoo! I guess four charges? And then you counter with your four charge cooldown ultimate. I've been playing too much of watch. It's called special, yeah, I know. Okay, so Wait, hang on. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know. Because they have a um they have iceberg with a three turn cooldown there. So that kind of suggests that they expect you to kind of proc a three turn cooldown special with this skill in retaliation uh, it feels like that anyway so either either she's got quite a bit of speed and she's not gonna get doubled or um yeah i i guess that's a possibility a high speed but then people with high risk generally don't have high speed but I digress. Uh, she find, she gets Red Tomb Valor 3, which is good if unit survives. So you know what the Tomb Valor is and the Valors do. You get double SP for that type of unit, uh, weapon type. So that's really good. Finally, we have Red Tomb Valor. Um, I can finally grind SP for my Silica. Okay. Yeah, okay, so Vengeful Fighter 3 has got an HP threshold, and then Bold Fighter does not have a th HP threshold. Right, so. Okay, cool. So let's move on with the video. Let's take a look at her attack in, uh, animation. I'll die you, Red. Wow, that's actually pretty cool. Alright, that, that does look pretty cool. That's that that looks pretty sick. Okay. So we're getting new maps, of course. Um and we're getting four new units. I mean exclusive units. Alright, um I guess that's going to be it for the video. Uh 
I feel like I kind of lost steam along the way because I started not knowing what to talk about. But I hope the video kind of, you know, turned out okay. Still trying to work on my commentating skills. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you guys enjoy listening to my take on some of these new units and their new skills and whatnot. Um, but yeah, please comment down below if you like. Uh, let me know like what kind of builds you might work with with these new skills if you plan to inherit them to your existing units. Or maybe just let me know some interesting builds that you guys are thinking of, you know, uh, for these uh, upcoming units themselves. That, that would be pretty cool. Um, other than that, uh, if you want to chat with people that like this game, I, I guess, uh, there's a Discord server that I started. I, I guess it's like a month now or something. Um, but details for that down in the video description below. And... All my other stuff is down there as well. Um, but yeah, with that being said, guys, I will uh, catch you guys next time.